Most male is never happier than when he is looking through the morning's delivery of the U.S. mail. And here at 79 Wistful Vista, the squire is trying to look as important as one postcard, a chain letter, and a gas bill will permit. As we join Fibber McGee and Molly. Who's the postcard from, dearie? A friend. What friend? I don't know. That's all the signature there is. A friend. Well, what does it say? It says, why don't you rake the leaves off your front lawn? Are you trying to make a slum of this neighborhood? Sign, a friend. <laughs> Fine friend. Do you recognize the handwriting? It ain't hand wrote. It's typewritten. I mean, uh, it, it ain't hand wrote. Ri- ri- it's it's type. No, I mean, what I mean. I know what you yeah. mean. Yes, I know. Typewritten. And uh, <laughs> while I believe that sending anonymous letters is a cowardly, cheap, and awful thing to do, uh, why don't you rake the leaves off the lawn? Fertilizer. What? <laughs> Come on. I'm leaving them there intentionally. Let the snow cover them and let them rot. Next year we'll have the finest lawn in the neighborhood. <laughs> Fertilizer. Well, uh, yes, there's that. And then, too, if you let those leaves lie there a few thousand years, you'll have a ton of coal. <laughs> <laughs> What are those two letters? I haven't opened them yet. This one is kind of heavy. I wonder what... Oh, my goodness, a chain letter. Mm. <laughs> What's the other one? Well, let me see here. Oh, well, I'll be... A... Hey, this is from my cousin Ernest. Oh? My gosh, I haven't seen old Ernest since... Well, way before the... Oh, it was long before the... Come to think of it, I don't even know Cousin Ernest. <laughs> Must be one of the West Side McGee's. The what? The West Side McGee's. Oh, I guess I never told you about the family feud. No. You see, in 1876, my great-great-grandfather... Father. <laughs> yes. My great-great-grandfather, Patrick Henry McGee, he got accidentally locked in the smokehouse for three days, you see. Yeah. And when he got out, he was so dark, my great-great-granduncle Macintosh McGee smacked him with an axe thinking he was an Indian, see. <laughs> That kind of split the family up. (laughs) Yes, I can see how it would. But I never was one for family quarrels. Uh, What does Cousin Ernest say? Oh, he's coming to visit us for a few days. When? Oh, we got lots of time to get ready for him. He won't be here till the 23rd. Fine, that'll give me time to clean the guest room. Mm -hmm. McGee, this is the 23rd. What? It is? Well, gee whiz, I got to get busy. Got to get a guest card to the Elks Club and got to line up a couple of poker games and prize fights and got to Oh, hello sip... there, Alice. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Mr. McGee, any mail for me? Just a letter from the airplane plant, Alice. They said they hid to see you leave their employ and wished you good luck and enclosed your final paycheck for $39.18. McGee, did you open Alice's letter? Why, certainly not. <laughs> I was just seeing who it was for, and I happened to be lighting a cigar at the same time, and I happened to get the letter between me and the lighted match, and I read the whole thing before I realized what I was doing. Yes, he was so absent-minded about it, Alice, he had to light three more matches before he could make out the amount of the check. (laughs) Oh, that's all right, Mrs. McGee. Some people might think he was a nosy little snoop, but I know it was just a friendly interest. Hey, don't make too many social commitments for the rest of the week, kid. Hmm? I may want to arrange a few dates for my cousin Ernest. He's coming to visit us. Maybe he's married, McGee. Oh, I doubt if Ernest is married. None of the West Side McGee's ever got married until late in life. <coughs> cousin Hubert didn't get married till he was 87. <laughs> yeah, and then he married a kid of 65. <laughs> Everybody said he was silly marrying a girl 22, younger, 22 years younger than himself. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were very happy until he died, 20 years later. <laughs> Broke his neck falling off his polo pony. <laughs> well, what does your cousin Ernest look like, Mr. McGee? Frankly, Alice, I don't quite remember cousin Ernest. But all the West Side McGees were good looking. My great uncle Folsom used to pose for collar ads. Creepers, really? Mm-hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Then the harness business folded up and he had to go to work. <laughs> You keep a few evenings open this week, Alice. I think you'll like Cousin Ernest. If he's like the rest of them West Side McGee's, he'll keep you out dancing till the cows come home. Hmm. I used to go with a boy like that. He kept me out dancing till the cows came home and then got sore because I wouldn't help him with the milking. <laughs> well, <laughs> he'll probably be here by dinner time, Alice. 
You can meet him there. Oh, that'll be super, Mrs. McGee. Gee, I hope he's tall and handsome with lots of money. Oh, what am I saying? What do I care how tall or handsome he is? Well, <laughs> goodbye now. I'll go upstairs and check over my engagement book. I do wish I knew more about your cousin Ernest, dearie. I'd like to know what to cook for him and everything. Well, in the first place, he must be my second cousin. He's one of Aunt Lucy's boys, and she's a second cousin to Annie Hogan. Oh? There's a lot of dough in that branch of the family. Hey, maybe I can get cousin Ernest to invest a few thousand bucks in a certain project of mine. What project? I don't know, but I'll think of one. <laughs> hey, you know what? No, what? I'm going to throw a big dinner for Ernie at the Elks Club tonight. Oh, dear. Yes, sir. Get a private dining room. Flowers on the table, salted cups and little paper nuts, architects with melted butter. You don't mean architects, hmm? Art. You, you mean artichokes. Oh, go on. An artichoke is a... is a... Boy, this is a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I think you better skip it. Okay. Hey, where's my Parcheesi board? All the West Side McGee's are great Parcheesi players. You know where the Parcheesi set is, you? Yes, I think it's... Oh, I know. It's in the hall. No, McGee, I just saw... (laughs) Upstairs on the table in the hall. Incidentally, remind me to straighten out that closet one of these days. Did you ever get in touch with the Elks Club, McGee? Yep. They're going to fix up the private dining room for me. Going to have squab, corn on the cob, architects with melted butter. Artichokes. Artichokes with melted butter, and crepe Suzettes for dessert. Mm-hmm. Isn't squab pretty expensive? Uh, the chef is a friend of mine. He's giving me a special rate. He raises homing pigeons, and they lost their last six races. <laughs> Hey, what are crepe Suzettes? Four alarm pancakes. Oh. <laughs> Who are you inviting to this clam bake, dearie? Oh, just a few ultimate friends. Mayor Latrivia, Alice Darling, Doc Gamble, Wilcox, Old Lady Carstairs, <laughs> and you, of course. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it's <laughs> nice to be numbered among your intimate friends. <laughs> I'd hate to think we'd just been casual acquaintances all these years. <laughs> Oh, I gotta have you there. Somebody's gotta insist that I make a speech. <laughs> right after the dessert, you say, I think we ought to have a few words from our host. Okay. <laughs> then I kind of blush and everybody will applaud, and then I'll get up kind of bashful and make a brief speech. An hour and a half or so. <laughs> I got it all wrote out. Well, it'll, it'll be worth the entire expense of this thing to see you blush, McGee. Oh, that's easy if you know how. Just hold your breath a few minutes, then as you let. Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Molly. And how are you, egghead? (laughs) Fine, butcher boy, fine. Hey, Doc, what are you doing tonight? What I usually do, make my rounds at the hospital, answer a few phone calls about whether or not it's all right to eat lobster and ice cream at the same meal, conduct my regular classes for amateur fathers in baby burping, then go to bed for a well-earned rest, which I won't get because some dimwit picks the hour of 4 a.m. to light a match to look into his gas tank. (laughs) Well, uh, is it all right to eat lobster and ice cream at the same meal, Doctor? It is a matter for individual research, my dear. I've done it and loved it, but I happen to have a digestive apparatus designed by the Bethlehem Steel Corporation. (laughs) The reason I asked what you were doing tonight, Pasteur, <laughs> I'm having a special dinner at the Elks for my cousin Ernest. I'd like to have you there. Not on account of your personality, but just in case somebody chokes on a bone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, my boy. I'll be there if I can make it. Fine. But don't get annoyed if I'm called away in the middle of the salad course to usher a new little vital statistic into the world. Have I met Cousin Ernest? No, and neither have we, Doctor. He's coming to visit us for a few days. Oh, well, it'll be nice to meet him. Particularly if he hasn't... I'll get it. 79 Wistful Vista, Molly McGee speaking. Who? Yes, he's right here. It's for you, Doctor. Thanks. Gamble speaking. Who? Oh, yes. 
Well, I'll be right over and take care of it. Just don't worry about it. Yes, right away. You'll excuse me, folks. You've got to make an emergency call. Oh, something serious, Doc? Yes, I've got to show a woman how to remove stains from a rug. Well, that's an unusual thing to ask a doctor, isn't it? No, no. That was Mrs. Stains calling. Her husband's pie-eyed again. <laughs> You'd be up to do. Hadn't you better get down to the Elks and see if everything is all right for your dinner party? Hey, I guess I better have it that. I got to confer with the chairman of the Greens Committee. The Greens Committee? Yeah, I want to be sure there's no sand in the spinach tonight. You can help arrange with the flowers on the table and then Hello, you can... Molly. Hello, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Junior, you're just the guy I wanted to see. You free for dinner tonight? Well, I was taking my wife out to a Chinese restaurant. Every now and then she gets a yen for some gung far chi and lim tui. <laughs> Don't... Well, uh, looky, Junie. <laughs> I got a cousin coming for a visit, and I'm throwing a little marshmallow roast at the Elks. Why don't you bring your sparring partner and join us? Gee, I'd love to, pal. Hey, let me use your phone, and I'll check with Sugarface. Help yourself, Mr. Wilcox. Tell her it's strictly informal, plaid tie and toothpicks. Okay. <laughs> Hello, operator. Give me Westwood 000001. Hmm, you must have known somebody to get a low number like that. <laughs> Hello, is this the Wilcox residence? Mr. Wilcox speaking. I'd like to speak to Mrs. Wilcox, please. Yes. Who's that? One of the butlers. One of the butlers? <laughs> yes, Tilly Butler does the house cleaning. Pete Butler washes the window. <laughs> Hello, Dreamboat. This daddy's little taffy apple? How long has he been married? I'm beginning to wonder if he is married. <laughs> Uh, listen, honey lip. Remember Mr. McGee? Yes. Only you mustn't talk like that, loving goodness. <laughs> They'll take our phone out. <laughs> well, look, we're invited to have dinner with the McGees at the Elks Club tonight. Huh? Oh, but you can do that in 20 minutes or less, dear. Remember what Daddykins is always telling you? What are you always telling her, Daddykins? Quiet, McGee. <laughs> Look, jelly cake. Oh. <laughs> All you have to do is pour out a little Johnson's Gloco. No, Gloco. G L O. Hyphen. C O A T. Gloco. <laughs> oh, now there's lots of it on the shelf in the back hall. Sure. Now look, just pour a little out on the linoleum, spread it around with the long handled applier, and let it dry. What? Of course, you don't have to do any rubbing or buffing. It shines as it dries. <laughs> Yes, I know you love that beautiful linoleum, but just take Daddy's word for it. Glow coat will protect it and keep it from getting dull and dingy looking. Yes. All right, Spaniel eyes. <laughs> Goodbye. What? Oh, you know I do. Goodbye. She knows you do what, Mr. Wilcox? Have my umbrella with me. <laughs> what time at the Elks Club, pal? About 7.15, Waxy. But look, how come your wife don't know any more about glow coat than that after living with all these years with you? Oh, she knows all about it. <laughs> she knows all about it, but she always pretends not to in case I'm phoning from a public place and there might be some people standing around. But she will come to dinner with us, Mr. Wilcox. Oh, sure. She said she was all set for some gung far chi and some lim tui, but she'd be glad to... What the Sam Hill is gung far cheese and limb to it? Ham and eggs. Oh. Oh. See you at 7.15, pal. So long, now. What a couple. Can't you just see her one of these days with a gleam of joy in her eyes, whispering to old Harlow that precious little secret? That she just bought a new batch of glow coat? <laughs> well, never mind them, dearie. We better be getting downtown. Yeah. Your cousin Ernest might be here any minute. Say, what if he calls while we're gone? Oh, I'll leave a note on the telephone. My <laughs> I never would have thought of that. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I wonder if that'd be cousin Ernie. Maybe it is. Come in. Heavenly huh? days. It's Mrs. Oh. Carstairs. Hello, Mrs. Carstairs. How do you do, my dear? Good day, Mr. McGee. Carsty, you're as welcome as a tax refund. <laughs> Where are you tying on the feed bag this p.m., kiddo? I, uh, 
I'm sorry to appear obtuse, Mr. McGee, but would you mind translating that into English? Remember, I haven't had all your disadvantages. <laughs> well, he was just asking if you have any engagement for dinner tonight, Mrs. Carstairs. Himself here is giving a little dinner party for a cousin in the private dining room at the Elks Club. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I shall be glad to come. Although, due to a previous engagement, which is part of my personal program of cultural development, I must scram quite early. <laughs> well, scram any time you like, Karsty. You got to get home for something? My music lesson, Mr. McGee. Heavenly days, dearie. Are you studying music? Piano? Uh, no. Banjo? Uh, no. Is it a secret, Mrs. Carstairs? Well, not exactly. But I've just taken up this instrument because of Mr. Carstairs. You see, he was at one time a captain in the Scottish Highland Regiment. You don't mean... You're learning to play the... Yes, the bagpipe. <laughs> Mr. Carstairs likes to have me march around the breakfast room table playing the Battle of the Boyne Water as his oatmeal's being served. Boy, he must be a real Scotsman. Oh, he is indeed, Mr. McGee. He knows that after one of those performances, I'm much too winded to do any shopping that day. <laughs> well, I must gang away the new hoots toots. <laughs> All right, boys. I need one more chair on this side of the table. Yeah, that's it. Hey, Joe, that second place on the left there hasn't got any butter knife. So what? He won't have any butter. Oh, okay. Well, how does everything look, Molly? Very handsome, McGee. Who arranged that floral centerpiece? I did. You like it? Why, it's beautiful. Those are lovely roses. Yeah. Artificial ones would have been prettier, but there's a paper shortage, and I had to get real ones. <laughs> <clears throat> hey, Joe, how about ashtrays? Oh, forget it. Everybody stubs out the butts in the coffee saucers anyway. Okay. Now, let me see. I wish I knew what kind of cigars Cousin Ernest smokes. I'd get a couple of boxes. Look, dearie, I don't want to be a damp Afghan, but uh, aren't you going a little overboard for a cousin you never saw? Nothing is too good for a McGee, Snooky. <laughs> By George, if I can't welcome my own blood cousin and such... Hey, Joe. Yeah? What kind of wine are you serving with the fish course? There ain't any fish course. What kind of wine would you serve if we had a fish course? Applejack. Ah. <laughs> My choice, exactly. I want to do this thing right, Molly. After all, Cousin Ernest may be a kind of a corner seer. Incidentally, uh... <laughs> isn't it about time you were hearing from Cousin Ernest if he's coming? Oh, didn't I tell you? Doc Gamble said he'd pick him up at the station. Oh, how will Dr. Gamble know him? Well, Doc's wearing a carnation in his buttonhole. Oh? Mm -hmm. That way, Cousin Ernest will wreck Hey, Joe. Now what? We going to have a bus boy tonight? Yeah, but he'll be a little late. How come? Missed his bus. Oh. <laughs> now, let me see. Napkin, place card, celery, and all Oh, McGee, here comes Mayor Le Trivia. Huh? Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hello, Molly. I got your invitation at my office, McGee. As I was going by here, I thought I'd drop in and tell you I'd accept with pleasure. Well, swell, the trivia. This is in honor of my cousin, Ernest. Oh. You'll be seeing a lot of him the next few days. Poker games, golf, bowling, and all stuff like that there. Hmm. We're going to have broiled squab, Your Honor. You like squab? Oh, very fond of it, Mrs. McGee. Didn't have much of that stuff in the Solomon Islands. Hey, the trivia? Yes, but we called it by the native term. What was that, Mr. <laughs> Spam. <laughs> Our food was all right, but in some of the officers' messes, they had... Sir, quite... sir, some of the what, Latrivia? In some of the officers' messes, they Isn't had... Isn't that just sour grapes, Mr. Mayor? Isn't what just sour grapes, Mrs. McGee? The fact that you weren't allowed to eat with the officers don't give you any right to call their food a mess, does it? <laughs> it is not sour grapes. Mess is the correct term for the officer's dining room. Well, even sweet grapes can make quite a mess, I'll say yeah. that. But you'd think the officers would be a little more fussy than to make a mess in their own... They room. didn't make a mess. It was a mess. Well, who made it? It's always a mess. I mean, in the service, the eating quarters are always a mess. Because... Now, just a darn... <laughs> 
Just because you're in civvy. You now. listen to me, McGee. <laughs> you're always getting me into one of these verbal brawls. But by George. My voice. Stop that shouting, my goodness. I was merely saying, Mrs. McGee, that in an officer's mess. Well, why did they always serve grapes if it made such a mess? <laughs> they didn't always serve grapes. They never served grapes. In the three years I spent in the Coast Guard, I never saw a grape. That's because you weren't an officer, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's really what you're griping about, Latrivia, because you had to eat with the enlisted man. I'm right. not griping about anything. I mean, if the officers did eat gripe, uh, grapes, their mess was... If the officers mess, what I'm trying to tell you is that an officer's gripe, a uh, grape, I mean, if they, made, if they made a mess, if... if <laughs> I say, McGee. Hey? You were in the last war, weren't you? Yes, he was, Mr. Mayor. The big war. <laughs> you bet. You. Tell me, what did you call the sergeant who had charge of the food supply? We called him Big Nose. <laughs> Big Nose Whitney. Why? But what was his official title? He didn't have any title. He was an American. <laughs> I mean, he was a sergeant, wasn't he? Certainly. Ah, what kind of a sergeant? A darn good one, Mr. <laughs> I remember one time... I mean, what was his official rank? Sergeant. What sergeant? My sergeant! <laughs> hey, where are you going, Latrivia? Down to the post office, McGee. If I'm not back here for dinner... I've re-enlisted! <laughs> Wonder why he was so interested in our mess sergeant. <laughs> Search me. <laughs> Frankly, I'm getting a little worried about your cousin Ernest. Oh, he'll be along any minute now. Doc Gamble will find him. When I think of the expense you've gone to for this dinner, and then if he didn't show up... Ah, pata. Shucks, it's only money. Hey, Joe. Yeah? <clears throat> Them squabs ready for the oven? They're in the oven. Oh. oh, dear, oh, dear, oh. This thing is... Oh, well, here come your guests, McGee. Hello, everybody. Oh, come on in, folks. Oh, oh my God. Come on, gather right around. Now, look, everybody, take your places according to the place card, see? And when Doc Gamble comes in with my cousin Ernest, let's all sing for he's a jolly good fellow, huh? Yeah. Yeah, we'll... Oh, here he is, McGee. Huh? Here's Dr. Gamble. Oh, okay, folks. And a one, and a two, and a three. Four. He's a jolly good fellow. What's the big idea, Doc? Where's Ernest? Right here. Ernest, this is your cousin Molly and cousin Fibber. Friends, this is your cousin Ernest. Oh, well, I ain't cousin Fibber. I cousin Molly. Gee, that was a swell train ride. I sat by the window all the way. Are, uh, are, uh, are you uh, Ernest McGee? Well, I ain't Clark Gable. How, uh, how old are you, Ernest? Eleven, going on twelve. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm hungry. Where are we going to eat? Uh, we're going to eat right here, Ernest. Uh, you like squab, son? What's a squab? It's a pigeon. And look who's talking. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the government of Canada has invited us to broadcast from Toronto, Ontario next week in conjunction with the opening of Canada's ninth victory loan. We are proud and happy to accept the invitation and... We look forward to seeing our friends in Canada. So next week, we'll broadcast from the Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, Canada. Are you all packed, dearie? Yeah, I'm all right. Hey, but look, what language do they speak in Canada? Uh, English. But uh, if you speak slowly, you'll get by. Oh. <laughs> Good night. Good night.